I always like to summarize what we just talked about before I move into the next step. So just as a, as a quick reminder, what we've done is we've taken a task, which is in a statement form. We've identified the subject. Sometimes there's one, two, or three subjects. They'll, they'll, I mean, I've never seen a diploma exam contain more than three subjects. I don't think that they would do that to you. Um, so we're identifying those subjects. We're then flipping that task into a question. What we haven't dealt with are the subjects within the task. So we're going to stick with the same example, and then I'm going to move into probably one that's a little bit more likely on your diploma exam. So we've been working with discuss an individual's response to adversity. So we've had we've circled adversity in our task. We might have come up with the question, how do individuals respond to adversity? And now what we're going to do is there's multiple ways of organizing your thoughts. I'm going to give you one suggestion. What I always tell my students is that you don't have to use my suggestion about how to think what's called thinking on paper. But if you're not using my suggestion, you need to find your own suggestion. Not using mine is not in place of nothing. So you do have to find a way to think on paper. And I'll talk a little bit later about why that becomes important. If, if you're motivated by marks, I'll, I'll talk about why that actually in, influences your marks later on. Um, so what I usually do with students is what's called like a T-chart or, or a series of columns, depending on how many subjects there are. So in column one, you would pull down the word adversity. And you would allow yourself five to seven minutes, literally five to seven minutes, you can set up a stopwatch. You have more than enough time on your diploma exam. You have six hours. So there's, there's no excuses to taking the time to think on paper. And what you would do is you would allow yourself the flexibility of just simply writing anything that comes to mind when you can think about that subject, adversity. Now here, here's the challenge, but also the opportunity for you. This is not a place to censor yourself because this is where the good stuff happens. And the more ideas we have on paper in these columns, eventually we're gonna take what's in those columns and construct your introductory paragraph. If you have nothing in those columns or you're simply censoring yourself with, that's a bad idea, that sucks, I don't think I can use that, then what you're doing is you're really limiting yourself later on at constructing a really sound introductory paragraph. So under adversity, I might have questions, I might have synonyms, I might have experiences, I might have examples. You are allowed to use a thesaurus and a dictionary on your critical essay, on your part A exam, which is the critical essay. So please do not do what many students do, which is, I don't know what the word means, and so I don't know how to respond. You are allowed a dictionary and a thesaurus, so please look up the words. Find other words that make sense to you. So if I look up the word adversity, I might find words like challenge, problem, difficulties. So you're going to write all of those down. And the more ideas you have, so when I write down challenges, suddenly my mind might be thinking about, oh, um, you know what? Challenges might be some things like divorce or separation or uh, being bullied in school or getting a poor uh, grade on an exam. Whatever the experiences are, you're going to jot those down. It doesn't mean you're going to use them, but they're going to be there for you to, to, to percolate on. Now, if you had two subjects, if you had something like fear and foresight, fear is going to go in one column, foresight is going to go in the second column. You're going to do five to seven minutes for each subject. The third column, and you might be saying, well, there's not a third topic. The third column is going to be the verb that was in the actual task. So if, for example, you had something like, originally, something that sounded like discuss an individual's response to fear and foresight, or discuss the interplay between fear and foresight. All interplay means, and I know this from, if I'm on my exam and you're gonna use my dictionary, means relationship. That's what that means, the relationship between fear and foresight. So column one is gonna have fear. I'm gonna jot down all my ideas about what fear means, synonyms, questions, experiences. Column two is gonna have be foresight, a, a more complicated word. Foresight means the ability to see to the future, the ability, the ability to predict and plan. So all of those ideas are gonna go in column two. In the third column, I'm gonna have the word interplay. That's the verb of the sentence. I might synonym it out so it says relationship, if it makes more sense to me. 
While in column one and two, I'm allowed to write notes. I can be messy, bullet points, incomplete ideas. What I would challenge you to do is by the third column, you're now constructing sentences that bring those relationships together. So for example, in my first column for fear, I might have a word or an idea that's similar to um, anxiety. So fear is often rooted in anxiety. Maybe I have that in my first column. And my second column, foresight, I might have the idea about uh, being able to see a little bit and, and plan the future. In my third column, I now want to take those ideas and bring them together in solid sentences. So my first sentence might sound like, um, oftentimes in life, when we have anxiety, it's rooted in fear at us not being able to predict what's going to happen in the future. Or about us not having the foresight to predict what's gonna happen in the future. Suddenly in that one sentence, I'm bringing together two ideas. I wanna pause here and make sure that you understand that a big mistake that students make on the exam is if they have more than one subject, students often think they can talk about just the subject that they feel comfortable with. The exam is not asking you to do that. The exam is often asking you about a relationship between ideas. They want to know that you can navigate a cause and effect relationship oftentimes between one idea and another. So if you're spending five to seven minutes brainstorming on the one subject and then five to seven minutes brainstorming on the second subject, you're going to spend a good 10 to 15 minutes constructing your sentences. The value of that is that third column becomes your introductory paragraph. And I'll talk a little bit about what that means.